Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm going to be reviewing a new home laser cutter. Glowforge sent me the Glowforge Aura. This is their newest laser cutter and what they're calling their first craft laser cutter, which I think is a little telling about both its power output, the types of materials you're able to cut with it, the type of processes and things that you'd be using this for, and maybe most importantly, the type of spaces that this may be suited for. Whereas the Glowforge Pro works great out of a dedicated workshop or a home garage space, uh, this laser cutter may be more suited for a home office or like this space, my wife's maker studio, living alongside you know, an entry level 3D printer or a vinyl cutter. And we're gonna dive into its speeds and feeds, how it works, but before we get started, I think it may be a good idea to recap just the state of home laser cutting, which in itself is kind of a mind boggling thing to say. Like, oh, 10 years ago, I couldn't fathom the ability to have a laser cutter in the home as just one of my tools, but something like the Glowforge Aura, you could go into a Michaels or Joann's and pick it up for $1,200 and get laser cutting that day, which is pretty incredible. And a lot of that is due to the maturing of the technologies that are available for laser cutting and the software suites that support that. So on the maybe, uh, prosumer or high-end consumer levels, you have what the Glowforge and Glowforge Pro are. They're glass tube CO2 laser cutters. You may see seen, seen equivalent ones from Omtech, from Full Spectrum Laser, and these laser cutters range in the power of 40 to 60 watts. The Glowforge Pro is weighted, rated for 45 watts of power output at its max strength. You look inside, inside the hood of those laser cutters and usually see a bed cutting size of roughly you know, 12 by 20 inches and be a little larger than that. And you see that clear water-cooled glass tube, uh, which itself is uh, consumable. So glass tube CO2 lasers have a shelf life. Use it over time, even if you don't use it over time, Within three to five years, it's something that naturally deteriorates and needs to get replaced. Uh, on the higher end, when you move into more of an industrial and business space, uh, you have laser cutters that use, they're also CO2 based, but they use metal lasers. And those are air cooled. Uh, they're a little bit more uh, reliable in the long run, a little bit longer lifespan, but they're also more expensive. And for a lot of businesses doing a lot of prototyping or a lot of manufacturing and need something that's gonna last a long time, Time, they might invest in that. On the flip side of that, on the home laser cutter, the entry level laser cutter uh, front, there has been this emerging crop and a lot of new products uh, that use diode lasers. These are basically the equivalent of what's in your Blu-ray Blu -ray player. Uh, they're taking that blue laser, they're running it through their own custom optics, and you have something in that maybe $1,000 price range, I've seen some go as low as $500, that you can run at home. Now, the power output for those diode-based lasers is gonna be much lower. They typically hover in the 10-watt range. I've seen some go up to 20 watts. Some combine two diodes through a mirror and lensing system to double their power output. And the Glowforge Aura is a diode-based laser system uh, with a rated power out, uh, output of six watts. Although Glowforge would tell you that what's perhaps more important than the rated a wattage is actually the wattage per square centimeter. The combined output of that diode through that lens and how much uh, brightness, how much power they can get into the precision of that line. Uh, let's look at the anatomy of this laser cutter because it is a uh, desktop machine. It's $1,200. Uh, you pick it up at a craft store online or at a Michaels or a Joann's. So they have uh, wide distribution here in the States. And the footprint's actually pretty impressive. It's uh, much smaller in person than I thought, especially compared to the Glowforge and Glowforge Pro. It is about five inches tall, uh, 22 inches by 20 inches, and it cuts material that's basically 12 inch by 12 inch exactly. So you think of a 
vinyl record album. Uh, there's a lot of materials that you can buy, uh, whether it's felt, whether it's cardstock, that's exactly cut for 12 inch by 12 inch. And of course, Glowforge will sell you their proof grade materials, uh, whether it's acrylic, wood, leather, veneer, uh, or even their new non-vinyl iron-on uh, that's exactly cut uh, 12 by 12. Uh, on the sides here, there is a pass-through system. So I can open up both sides and you can actually fit you know, uh, material that's wider than 12 by 12. So the standard 12 by 20 material that I have for my Glowforge Pro will fit in here. And while it's not unlocked yet, they will, like the pass-through system on their higher end machines, on their Pro machines, uh, be able to align your cuts. You can cut an object at 12 by 12 at a time, slide the material down, it will automatically calibrate uh, and recognize where that cut is and then continue a cut so you can get much wider objects. But at most 12 inch tall or 12 inch wide depending on the orientation of the thing you're actually cutting. Now one of the big differences between this and some of the other entry level dial laser cutters is that this is a fully enclosed machine and Glowforge really prides themselves on putting a bunch of sensors and really maximizing the reliability and safety, the comfort of the user when they're buying this as their first laser cutter and running it at home. So to that point, they have this uh, tinted piece of plastic to shield you from the class one laser that's inside. And they have accelerometers and sensors on the lid itself so that whether when the lid's opening or if the Glowforge is even bumped while it's running, uh, the laser will stop. So even though you're supposed to run these lasers in the same room, uh, you're supposed to be in the same room as the lasers are running, or if you have a large workspace, you're in that same space. I would never want to run this and not be in the house, for example. Uh, you can at least have the peace of mind that the laser is not gonna fall off the gantry or something's gonna jostle or the machine's gonna fall off the table or something and the laser is gonna continue running. Uh, the machine, uh, if someone lifts the lid, if it gets jostled, it will uh, pause that laser cut. So inside, it has all the hallmarks of kind of your laser cutter, uh, your higher end laser cutter, but in a smaller form factor. So it's basically a two axis machine. You have two motors, you have one running the X axis, one running the Y axis, along with a belt that has this travel. Uh, and the laser head here is this unit, actually magnetically attaches to the gantry right there, kind of snaps in place, has a fan on top, and then there's a ribbon band that supplies it the power um, that goes into this back unit, which is also where the air exhaust is. Uh, you can kind of slide this yourself and push it all the way back for its, uh, to reset its calibration. And underneath that, you have your crumb tray. And everything here feels like a simpler version than what you'd find in the big laser cutter. So even the crumb tray, it's just this sheet of uh, this metal right here. Um, I've put some magnets on the side. So it's always recommended if you're cutting a lightweight material like paper, to put, I use magnets just to sit in here and then I place the magnets on top of my material to hold it in place. So that just lives here on top of the crumb tray and that perfectly then nestles in uh, in case you need to vacuum or clean out any of your fallen pieces underneath. Uh, the crumb tray is bigger than 12 v 12 or 12 by 12. Uh, and so what users have already created are, for example, a little jig, a little alignment tool. So if I put this in my back left corner, uh, I can then push my material against it. And I know that's exactly my 12 by 12 size. And 12 by 12 is basically exactly the size, the maximum size it can cut. So if you want to cut a circle that's 12 inch diameter, you can do that. I would just recommend you first use a jig on uh, the top corners um, to perfectly situate your material. Um, and then, like I said, there's that pass-through, so you can see there are spaces here for material to slide in from the outside and a little gasket so that when you're putting material in, the fumes don't come out those side uh, as well. And fume and air quality management is a big part of running a laser cutter. Uh, when you buy the Aura, uh, it comes with a hose and you want to vent it out a window. Something they also sell is a personal air filtration system. Uh, this is $400 and they sent me this to test out as well. So the hose connects 
right onto here. Uh, and this has an air filter that is it's also consumable, but very easy to replace. So I can take the top off, and here is the air filter. And after a couple weeks of regular cutting, you can already see that the air filter's color has changed. Uh, haven't been able to exhaust the air filter yet, uh, but uh, they say that someone cutting regularly will need to change that out a couple times a year if you're actually using this on a very regular basis. The replacement cartridges are $135 each. And I think that's a little bit on the high end. So my personal hope is that uh, there will be maybe a third party manufacturer who will sell a compatible uh, air filter cartridge at a more reasonable price. Um, but what the air filter does is allow you to run the Aura basically in an enclosed office space, which is pretty amazing. I mean, this unit itself is uh, a little over 20 pounds. The air filter is pretty light. It consumes uh, about at max 85 total watts. So you could actually have this unit be portable. You could take it to uh, a crafting convention. You can move it from your house to your neighbor's house, plug it into uh, to wall outlets, and be safely laser cutting. That feeling of safety, that this peace of mind of running a laser cutter is one of the big, biggest selling points of the Aura. Uh, never in my time testing this, was I concerned about the fumes once the air purifier, uh, the air filter was connected, and once I had this running, uh, it just felt like I was laser cutting uh, immediately. Now something also interesting that they've done is they've made this user experience almost too seamless or simple. Uh, while there is a button on top of the Glowforge, there is no actual power switch. You don't go in the back and flip an on-off switch. Uh, it by default goes to sleep after 30 minutes and to activate it, you lift the lid, the light turns on and you're ready to go and you can run it and uh, read it in the web-based software. Uh, same with the air purifier, the air filter. Uh, there's a button here that's meant to use to pair this over Bluetooth with the Glowforge, but there's no actual manual on or off switch. What it does is once it's paired with the laser cutter and the software will recognize as you have a Glowforge plus air filter. And once you start a cut, once you press that button here when it's glowing white, the filter turns on automatically and will turn off automatically as well. I'm of two minds about this. I like that it's convenient and it's always working. So uh, on my current uh, Glowforge Pro and air filter in my office, I have this signs that say, don't forget to turn on the, the filter. Don't forget to turn on the exhaust when I run that. Here, I never have to remember that because it always just automatically activates. At the same time, I do wish there was a way to manually turn on the fan in the air filter if I want to run the filtration system for a little bit uh, longer after a cut, just really get rid of the fumes. And so I wish there was a way I could like, you know, double tap or triple press this button to manually turn that fan on. Maybe that's something they can do with a firmware update because uh, there is this is firmware updatable over Wi-Fi as well. Um, and that kind of speaks to how I think Glowforge thinks about these systems, is they want people to be designing and cutting uh, as quickly as possible without thinking about the, the mechanical operations of all the things, all the, the maintenance that you'd have to do, all the other overhead that you'd have to, have to think about when running a laser cutter. They want this to be as seamless an experience as possible, which it is, I think, to some extent. We're, we're, we're over five years now into the Glowforge platform and all the concerns, I think, about their cloud-based software, for example, I've stopped worrying about. I haven't had reliability issues or downtime whenever I've wanted to make a laser cut with my Pro. I've been able to, and now with many, many, many thousands of units and hopefully even more of these auras 
out there. Uh, we have a there's a large user base of people, and uh, more people are invested in that platform and the upgrades that they've been able to deliver over time in terms of speed uh, and things like the camera. So there also is a camera here. It's the same 8 megapixel wide angle camera that's in the Glowforge Pro. What that allows is a snapshot preview of the material that you put on. Uh, it's also used to recognize the QR code that's on their proof grade material. So if you choose to buy material from them, it should automatically detect the settings. And here's where there's also a big difference between this and the Glowforge Pro or a, a CO2 laser. The diode lasers have restrictions in terms of what materials it can cut. It can't cut through clear acrylic, for example, because as that diode cut goes through, clear acrylic actually dissipates through that material and it won't be able to do a full cut. In the same vein, some light colored translucent acrylics, like blue, light blue acrylics, it will have a difficult time cutting through because it is a blue laser and that blue material absorbs the laser as opposed to letting it cut through. So darker acrylics actually cut faster than something like an orange acrylic. And what that means is that you're more relying on their proof grade settings when you're cutting a variety of different color materials. It's not just one power and speed setting. It works for all types of a material of a certain thickness. Uh, I've taken to jotting down notes, you know, going through the presets of proof grade materials and finding what settings are best for red, orange, purple, green, and black, and then making my own custom modifications for that when I'm using my own acrylics. And here's where we're gonna talk about the speed and power of this six watt diode. Because the biggest takeaway from using this machine is that it does require a bit of patience. It is a little bit slow. It's actually a lot slow. Uh, they say it's about one tenth the uh, potential speed of their Pro Glowforge Pro. And in my testing, that's pretty accurate. So here are a couple examples. Um, the fastest thing you're gonna be able to cut is Paper. So here is a stencil cutout of uh, some cardstock. Max this out at 100% speed, 10 power on the Aura, and something like this took about 10 minutes to cut. Uh, if you were to cut the equivalent thing on a Glowforge Pro, it would be done in less than two minutes. Uh, and when we're talking about cutting paper, which you could also of course do with a vinyl cutter, like a Cricut Maker, uh, comparing the Aura with the speed of cutting paper on a vinyl cutter, the Aura is slower than that, almost to a tune of 50% speed. I did a test cutting a full design on the vinyl cutter, which took two minutes, on the Glowforge Aura, it took up to four minutes to cut the exact same design. Of course, different machines, you're never gonna be cutting vinyl on the Glowforge Aura and on more thin or delicate paper materials, I would be more hesitant to cut that on the vinyl cutter because you have to tack that onto your cutting mat and then removing that, weeding that paper, uh, you're more likely to tear it or you can't get those delicate materials. If you're cutting tissue paper, for example, rather cut that on a Glowforge than cut it on a vinyl cutter. I wouldn't actually think I'd trust a vinyl cutter to make the tissue paper not tear after cutting it. Um, but wood, for example, uh, you can cut you know, their medium thickness wood, which is roughly 1 8 inch. So a design like this took about 30 minutes, and that's hardwood, and that's why they've also introduced a whole new line of thinner materials. So they have their light material, which is thinner, somewhere between 16th of an inch and an eighth of an inch, and a design like this took 45 minutes while cutting acrylic, even their new Eco Thin Acrylic, and that's about, uh, again, somewhere between uh, 16th of an inch and eighth of an inch, uh, when I measure with my calipers, it is roughly 0 0.08 inches. Uh, something like this does require two passes, and this cut took about an hour to do. So uh, this is not a machine, I think, that's going to be best suited for 
manufacturing, for making you know, jewelry to sell on Etsy, for doing a large, complex, detailed cuts, uh, this is a machine that you're going to maybe run in your workshop, in your office, while you're also then doing some work on the computer. Um, most things, if you're not cutting paper, does take in the 30 minutes to one hour time period to do a full cut. But you can still make some pretty cool stuff. So you can make layered maps, for example. This is about a 45 minute cut to cut through all uh, four of these different materials. Uh, this is a fun design I found online. All of these layers cut on one sheet of 12 by 12 material, but to cut all these different layers of 1 8 inch um, plywood here took two hours before I even got to the paint and assembly process. So to make something like this is going to be, you know, a half day commitment. And the thicker material you cut, the more time it's going to take, of course, to a point where if you want to cut something that's a quarter inch and the aura on the website is rated to cut quarter inch material or even engrave on a thicker material if you want to remove that crumb sheet. Uh, this was a test I did on Glowforge's thick acrylic, which is even less than a quarter inch. It's basically like 0.22 inches. This took seven passes on the aura and this circle, which is about two and a half inches in diameter, took 15 minutes to cut through. And even then, when you look at the edges of the cut here, you can actually see all seven layers as it's going through. On a Glowforge Pro, this would have been at most two passes, or you could actually get through quarter inch on one pass, but then you also get the telltale angling of your acrylic as the laser loses its focus uh, going all through the material. So while it's doable to cut quarter inch material, not something I think that's really uh, recommended regular use for the Aura. Um, in terms of regular use and maintenance, I'm told that uh, you don't really need to clean the lenses or anything. Just every about 10 hours of cutting, you take an alcohol wipe and you wipe down the two metal rods across the gantry, which I've done because that does accumulate some grime. And the accuracy of this is as good as the Glowforge Pro. Circles look like circles. My designs, my SGGs look exactly as they do on the computer when they come out of the machine. So as an entry level laser cutter, you know, we're talking about $1,200 for the Aura, $400 more for the air filtration system, you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars a year, maybe replace the filtration cartridges. It's a machine that still feels like a little bit of a luxury. Um, as much as I love my Glowforge Pro, I'm not manufacturing with it. I love having it available when I want to make dioramas, when I want something, uh, when I want to cut some wood or some acrylic uh, or felt. And I feel like for cutting paper, cardstock, felt, the Aura is going to be great for really accenting the type of crafting you're able to do um, on a regular basis or in the holiday season. Something that is interesting though, because there's going to be undoubtedly a lot of comparisons between this and a vinyl cutter as an alternative, uh, is that this head feels like it should be replaceable. And there are dialed laser cutters out there. I know Xtool makes one that's dual purpose, that has both a diode on its head as well as a, a, a blade. So you can use that as a two axis cutting machine. I would love to see in the future. I think it'd be worth paying a couple hundred dollars as an upgrade to be able to replace this laser diode head and make this also a plotter or vinyl cutter with a two axis blade cutting. Then I'd see a lot more value out of this. Um, compared to other entry level laser cutters, even though this is six watts, I think it's compares pretty nicely with its pass-through, with, again, that feeling of reliability, uh, that peace of mind, that comfort. You know that this has been a well-tested, certified, and full of sensors machines, really, really meant to be as safe as possible. 
uh, and the growing number of designs out there. Free SVGs that you can find, I'll link to a couple places below where I found these designs um, make the potential uses of a, a laser cutter more viable, even if you're not as skilled uh, in vector design. Uh, there's even actually some generative imaging software that Glowforge is introducing, so you can type in command prompts uh, and generate art on the fly. I think for a lot of people considering making a investment in their makerspace, their maker studio like here, and have something between $1,000 and $1,500 to spend, a laser cutter wouldn't top my list right now. I'd still advise investing in a modern, reliable 3D printer. I think you're gonna probably get more mileage and use out of a 3D printer than perhaps a laser cutter. If you want to get into paper cutting and you want to decide between a vinyl cutter and a laser cutter though, that's really where it seems, it seems to be the, um, a tougher decision. And I think these are still complementary machines. There are things that a vinyl cutter can cut and do that you can't do on a laser cutter, and there are many things that a laser cutter can do that you can't do on a vinyl cutter, and some overlap as well when you're talking about cutting cardstock and thin materials like fabric. It really depends on what you want to do with your crafting, what type of skills you want to develop. And I think that's probably the most important part. The Glowforge Aura, I think it's less about the amount of things that you're gonna be able to make on a regular basis to decorate your house with, to give to friends, to sell on an online store, and more about helping train your brain to work with vectors, work in a 2D design space uh, so that you can build up those skills, you can build those reps, and have a better understanding of how you can fabricate with this as a complement to other types of fabrication, whether it's 3D printing, whether it's CNCing, the 2D skills that you develop on an entry-level laser cutter or an entry-level vinyl cutter are gonna be really valuable. And I think the, the ease of which you can start making things with a product like this is its biggest selling point. Uh, so that's the Glowforge Aura. Um, it's gonna live here in our maker studio. I'll be um, already thinking about how to implement it and integrate it into uh, making uh, holiday presents this year. If you have questions about it, please post in the comments below. Uh, I'm Norm from Tested, and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.